Hello, hello everyone. So welcome to today's video where I basically want to do a quick little uh, tutorial on this new tool that I discovered just a week ago called Unicorn Studio. And basically with this tool you can generate interactive WebGL uh, components and bring them into your website, whether it be a hard-coded website or whether it be just a no-code website like I love to use Framer. And you can easily just copy paste into Framer as a Framer component and put it anywhere in your Framer site. Um, you can create things like this, like with a with a blur scroll effect, right? Beautiful. You can create things like this that follows the mouse and creates like a kind of a blur effect. You can create this type of pinch effect if you want to call it, right? You can create also things like this um, with a shade. So it looks like an actual like trees in front of this of this container. And yeah, Unicorn Studio, it's not really out for the public per se, but I basically just added my email to this waitlist and I got access like in about five days or something. So maybe you guys will be lucky too. Uh, please join and you're going to see um, how, how amazing this tool is. Also, another thing, when, when you're in the dashboard um, uh, and you're inside already, you can start a seven day free trial, which I'm currently doing right now. And with this seven day free trial, you can basically bring in components to your project without the Unicorn Studio logo. And uh, you can even export code, right? So it's, it's great. So let's get started um, with Unicorn Studio. So as you can see, once you're logged in, you get this nice little dashboard uh, with starter templates and with your projects. So these are a bunch of projects that I've made, basically copying other um, starter projects, starter templates that we have here. And each one has like a different thing. So the, each one of these starter templates um, actually are, are the examples that I showed you in the beginning of this video. So you see some really cool things like this amplify thing, like the scroll one and this dynamic blur hover, right? So what, what we want to do actually is we want to start a new project and we want to see the actual interface. So the interface is really cool because we have a desktop view, we have a tablet view, and we have a mobile view. So it's actually like a responsive design interface. Also on the very left hand side, you can see that we have a layers panel. We can, we can rename our project to our, to a project name that we want. For, for instance, we can name this tutorial. We have uh, some get, getting started tips right here, which is useful if you're just getting started like me, um, but I don't watch them. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyways, we have our uh, shapes here. We have our text. We have images that we can upload. We have uh, some SVGs that we can also upload and we have a few ones that we can use in this project so we can just, you know, click one and we can even edit it a little bit, right? For now we won't need this, but, and we have uh, different filters. So we have like gradient maps, holograms, duotones, adjusts, big vignettes. We have different distort interactions that for example, if you wanted, you make like a, like a ripple effect as it follows your mouse, you can do that. Uh, we have different blur effects. We have different lights that we can use. We have different, um, fil these are kind of also like filters because it's, it's like a pixelate. It's like an overlay kind of thing. We have, um, different miscellaneous things and we can create our own custom one. So we can even add, we can even add different, uh, Things here so we have our black our background our black round because it's completely black so we can make it like a we can keep it completely black and we can add something like a a beam of light and if I were to press play here you would see that the beam of light would automatically play right and it went away but if you were to make something like a ring you would see that it would be kind of like this or a nova it would like blink like this. But for now, let's just keep a point for now and see where that takes us. So now what we can do is we can even add another thing like a gradient map. So a gradient map is basically, it creates a, a gradient based on the, the color, based on the point from the bottom. We can press pause on this, but we can change the colors of this. So 
So this is like adding like a extra mask layer to the bottom part, right? So we can do something like this. And then what we want to do is we want to add some noise. So we can go here to noise and we can add some noise to this and actually press play on the noise. And now we have kind of like this lava lamp effect. And we can even remove this and see kind of how it looks like without this. I even like it without this gradient map. So we can just delete this and keep this like that, right? Now, the next thing that I want to add is, is another thing that it's called blinds. So we can add, for example, like ripples. And you can see like, kind of like these ripples. Looks like water kind of. And we can press play and it kind of ripples away. Very beautiful based on the color of the beam in the background. So we can even change the, we can press play and change it to another thing like a, like a rectangle, for example, like a Nova or a ring or the line. So the line goes away. Rectangle seems pretty crazy, but I kind of like the star or I like the point. Let's leave the point for now and let's not press play. We can even add more effects to it, like this blinds thing. And in the blinds, we can basically play the blinds or keep them like this at an angle. We can make them, you know, like this, lower the contrast or higher the contrast and lower the frequency to be a little bit like this. And then what we can do is we can add a kind of like an overlay. So like these stylized things we can eat, we can try with a pixelate just to see how that looks like. looks pretty cool. And then we can try with other things like, let's see, what's this retro thing? Oh, the retro thing also looks pretty cool. It looks like kind of like a video game style kind of makes me dizzy. So let's delete that. Um, and let's see what else we got. We got half tone, we got grain. Uh, we can try dither, dither. And we can adjust some things. We can press play and make the speed less. I don't really like it so much. I kind of like the pixelate more. But we can also leave this just like this. And we can adjust this a little bit so we can make it like this. So it's like kind of like a noisy gradient thing. So I think this looks pretty cool. If you ask me, we can even adjust the, the colors. So let's just keep this color for now. I like it, but let's see what else we got. We got blue. You got like this dark blue, we got pink, we got red. Red also looks pretty nice. But I'm kind of heading towards this dark blue. And yeah, so once we like it, we can what we can do is we can export it. So we can go here, export, and let's uh, publish it. And then we get this framer component. We can just go copy and open framer. And once we're in Framer, um, we can just paste it and we have the, the component right here. And then we can go back to Unicorn Studio and copy this. So let's deselect this and let's copy this, this ID here. Let's go back to Framer and paste this ID. And then I have this. Uh, hero section that I built using the blocks plugin with Framer, which is great. They have a few free uh, components that you can use like these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in here to this stack, to this main parent stack, right? And I'm going to make this absolute. I'm going to make the uh, width and height relative 100%. So 100%. So once the height and width are 100%, what we can do is we can um, make sure that this is, this is still selected, right? Right over here. And we click on this and we click on this. 
And then um, it all seems to be good. Let's just make the Z index uh, to zero. And let's uh, remove any uh, fills. So this can be removed. And what we want to do is we can publish the page update and click on play. And then it should be loading perfectly. So now we have that covered. Now what we want to do is we want to change the font color uh, just to make sure that, and we can lock this because we won't be editing this. So now we can just change the font color like this from the designer um, interface and just publish again, update, go back to Chrome, refresh, and boom, look at that beautiful hero section. So this is just, it, it, you know, um, bringing in uh, patterns from Unicorn Studio. We can even make this, we didn't make it follow our mouse, but we can make it uh, interactive to our mouse. But this is already beautiful for a nice little background. Um, and yeah, if you like this, I'm going to put the link in, in the description to this hero section so you can use this, this um, kind of gradient that I made. And uh, if, if you guys like this tutorial, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, if you have any feedback for me, please feel free to write in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear it. All right. Thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.